What's up? What's up? What is going on? What's happening? What's going on? Oh, man. Sorry, that was me. What was you? Oh, the, the music was playing in the background. I was trying to pull up the chat on YouTube. My fault. I wasn't trying to mess oh, yeah. up your stream, like, right off the jump. Yeah, you messed it all up. Gil, oh. why'd, you, why'd you do that? Gil, Sorry. you have no experience in podcasting. What's the matter with you? I know. I'm a newbie. I've been fucking learning. Yeah. Hey, you like my shirt? I do. I love yeah. it. I was I was looking at that when you were uh, moving around your light situation. Yeah, it was a Father's Day present, actually. It was pretty cool. Nice. Man, these kids, they know me, man. They know me. That's good. Cool. Actually, the funny part about it was I was actually in, uh, I was in a store with my kids and they saw like i had said oh that's such a cool shirt and then like we bought another shirt for the other kids or one of my other kids i forget what we were doing and then I, we left and father's day was around the corner and i guess like they talked and they were like oh he really liked that shirt and then you know they got me like three or four t-shirts that i really like enjoyed and liked are you able to you're not able to share this stream are you on your um i don't think so right yeah, no, I that's what I was just thinking. I just pulled up um YouTube and I was trying to uh I'm gonna share the YouTube feed. Is there a certain place that you would like them to come from or as long as YouTube's fine? I'm actually trying it's funny too because I went and looked after the episode where Ian was on the next day I had over a thousand streams and i was like wow but it was almost all on facebook and it's tough because like at least with youtube a lot of people can check in and then they can if they have like youtube premium or whatever they can kind of let it sit in the background and they don't have to worry about you know that the screen doesn't have to be on but where facebook they kind of have to like be there like with it on watching it you know what i mean so but who knows? Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? Yeah. So most of my audience actually is on on Facebook. But let's see if we can move it to let's see if I can move it over to YouTube. That's why I was posting. I said, hey, guys, we'll be on we'll be on YouTube. But. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an individual here who for most people that are going to watch this need needs absolutely no introduction. But there are people who are going to listen and they have no idea. They don't even know who you are, Gil, which is a travesty. So who the heck are you, Gil? Hey, man, I'm just a normal guy who who loves this this thing that we all do called HVAC. Um, second generation tech. My dad did this. Um, I, I've done pretty much every everything that you can do in the trade. Uh, like me and, you know, me and Everett were talking. I, I, I've done install all, all the way up to, you know, the service, the sales, the, you know, management to, to be in a general manager of multi-million dollar companies. And it's, uh, it's been a, it's been an amazing ride. And, um, through that, uh, also 10 years ago, I started the HVAC uncensored podcast, never in a million years thought that it would turn into anything. Uh, and now it's, you know, one of the largest HVAC podcast out, uh, with, uh, you know, millions of downloads, which, um, you know, it's, it's amazing. I, I love it. I love the people I get to meet, uh, you know, the people I get to help and at the same time make myself better. So it's, it's been awesome. I'm enjoying the ride and I'm going to enjoy it as long as it, as long as it goes, you know, cause sometimes just as fast as it comes, it can go. So, um, I'm, I'm just enjoying it, soaking it up. Has it ever gotten to a point where you felt like the podcast because of how popular it is and because of how many, you know, because of how many episodes you've done and how often you do it has ever come to a point in time where you've thought like it's a job. Yeah, for sure. And I, I try to not make it, I want to keep it fun. Like, you know, and like the podcast makes really, really good money. Um, but I keep it as extra. I don't count on it because I just, I don't want it to ever turn into a negative thing. Obviously it, it's a business, you know, the podcast is, um, you know, unstudioed, uh, unst uncensored productions owns 
HVAC Uncensored LLC. So I have a couple of different um, businesses that all wrapped into one underneath of it. But um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of work, and, and I've I've helped anybody that's and you you know I mean you're my friend. It's different, but even people that I'm not even particularly close to when they reach out to me and say, you know, hey, I want to start a podcast. Like I'm I'm all for helping. I, I think it helps our industry the more people that get out there and and do it. But it's, they realize it's a lot of work, man, especially when you work all day, you know, you, maybe you come home, you're tired. It's been a rough day, but now you have this, I got a commitment when I say I'm going to be there and people are waiting for me. I, I can't just not do it. And I feel horrible. Like my power outage situation, which has been fucking frustrating and I have to cancel shows. It sucks. Like I, I don't, I don't like it. Or on a Monday when an audio podcast doesn't come out on time, I'll have a thousand emails. Hey, everything okay? Hey, you good? Because they they know that they expect me at certain times. And uh it feels good, you know what I mean? That people are are waiting for that. But um, yes, it it, it is a job. I try not to make it feel that way. Um, but it's gotten big enough that it's kind of hard for it not to be, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. And I guess most people would not necessarily know this, but you were instrumental in me doing this and coached me through some things and trying to keep my head, you know, together. Like, Hey, listen, keep it simple, keep it consistent. Um, and I, you know, I, I just want to say, I thank you for that. And I'll probably thank you again. Um, but yeah, you and Terse were, were like instrumental and in like, even like some of the stuff that I bought and all this other stuff. And then you tell me you're going to send me all sorts of things. And, and then I keep waiting by the, I keep waiting by the mailbox. And well, Hey, I just, my, my fans, I mean, my supporters know that I'm the worst shipper ever. So yeah. I have two veto bags that were a giveaway last month that are sitting over there. So, um, Oh, a veto it, bags. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, yeah. But I, I I got you. I promise. And um, I'm but uh, I'm yeah. Totally but but I but I appreciate that, man. You know, and I I love and and I think what you're doing with this with this podcast it, it is amazing. It, it's a totally different avenue. I think it's something different. Um, but I also think when people start, they expect to grow too fast. They're not realistic. And it is all about being being consi- consistent. And I say that to everybody. Like, you know, people need to know. Hey, every Thursday eight o'clock. I want to go see Everett, especially the people that like your content and are interested. They need to know where to find you and you're going to be there at a certain time. And, you know, too many people, they'll do a show and they'll stop two weeks later. They'll do one, you know, I've, I've, I've I've noticed that. And I knew from the gate, I was like, well, first of all, who the hell even knew if anybody was going to seriously want to listen to anybody on this thing. And then it turned out that, you know, yeah, it's a really interesting angle. And I listened back because I was on the Misfits of HVAC podcast. And I, I listened back to like, because at first, as I first launched this thing, you were like, hey, come on. And you had me as a guest and you were like, hey, come on. And, and that was kind of neat. That was actually in January. That was or even December. It was like at the gate. And then I had no idea if anybody was really going to enjoy it. But I knew I just wanted to have conversations with people. And I was really I was really curious about things. And so I was hoping that it would get, you know, get some traction and, and, and God, I mean, it, it really has in a, in a very short time. So I'm really, I'm really happy about that. Um, so Gil, you spent, you spent time in, you were out in the field and you still like, now you're now what? Like, okay. You worked for Beltway for a while. Um, you were there and whatever. Now you're, now you're what you're coaching, you're, you're training. Is that, is that what's happening? Yeah. So, um, first and foremost, I, I love Beltway. Um, I I love Ryan, the owner. I love everybody that's there. I love what we, we built there with the culture and stuff like that. But to be honest, my, my heart just wasn't in it. And I've been battling with that for a long time. It was a struggle and it's not fair to the people there. If I'm not giving them, you know, the best version of myself, I can't fake the funk. And it it just got to the point where it just in my heart of hearts, it was like, you know, I, 
I want to do other things in my career. And to be honest, I don't even have it dialed in exactly what I want to do. I do enjoy this coaching. I love helping people and give back. And, you know, everybody says, oh, I want to help the next generation. And I've been saying that for years, but it's like, okay, well, put your money where your fucking mouth is. Like, let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's stop talking about it and actually helping people. And um, I just love helping these kids, man. Like the kid that I was with today, he, he's a smart kid technically. Like he understands the technical stuff. He just doesn't. He's not a talker. And, you know, I've only been riding with this guy for maybe a week and a half. You know, we have some classroom training and then I'm out in the field with him. And I show him how it works. And then I say, Okay, now you do it. You know, you go do this. And he um he had two calls where normally he would do maintenances and get nothing, you know? And he got what a, a $1600 ticket and a $1400 ticket. You know, was able to explain everything to the customer and let me just let everybody know, honestly, I I don't I don't teach that pathetic dishonest bullshit, you know. There's too much honest money out there, but uh yeah, and that's awesome. Just seeing the kid grow, and um, I, I love that. I'm not sure how, how I'm going to be able to do it on a mass uh, side. I'm still trying to put that together. Um, but I've been fortunate that I have some other business ventures in my life that I, uh, I don't have to, you know, rush into something. Uh, so I'm not sure what the next avenue um, is going to be for me. If anybody wants, you know, hey, hit me up. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. No, you don't have to kid around it. I mean, when Ian came on, he was straight up network market, straight up networking his business. He was like, all right, guys, well, call me. There were, you know, a thousand people that looked at it. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I got to hit you up. I got to hit you up. I got to hit you up. Um, so, yeah. You know what's so funny? So I sit on the board for TACA, Texas Air Conditioning Contractors of America. And what was so funny was, Today, um, the executive director said, I need you to do this training that you were talking about. And I said, a webinar, a webinar. I said, okay, I'll do the webinar. And then she said, I'm going to market it as the sales sales podcast guy, not <laughs> lapel. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, I want to market it as the sales sales podcast guy. So I was like, all right, oh, that's cool. Well, that okay. is cool. Yeah, I mean, it'll it'll you know it'll be like an hour webinar or whatever it is. I want to ask you, man, when 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 you say your heart wasn't into it, was it like an internalized thing? You just weren't like you weren't into it. Like sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll here I'll I'll sometimes I can feel that because maybe I don't have a transfer of belief of where I'm working. Maybe I don't believe where I'm at, or maybe. It's just like, oh, this is a bad fit. Or maybe it's just my stupid mind that's going, you know, shit. Like, what's next? Like, there's got to be something better. And there's always, for me, at least, I don't know what you feel. And this really sucks. But it's like, it's, there's something, it's, it's better. There's always something better. There's always like, there's, it's like, and it's a constant thing. And you know what? I've had friends tell me like, dude, like, you, like, like, bro, I, I think here's the thing. There's a certain people that have the mentality, like they wake up in the morning, like go to work. Like, that's what you do. You get up, you go to work, you get your paycheck, you fuck off and you go home and that's it. And then you'll work in the same place for however long. And then like, you know, maybe, maybe after like 10 years or some shit like that, something else comes along and that's really good. And I'm going to, I'll take that and I'll go do that. Right. But it's like that mentality where it's like, I can't, I can't wrap my head around. I can't wrap my head around that mentality at all. I, if I, I, I can't, and it's, I feel bad, but it's like, I just, I'm like, I want to, I want to, I want to go. I want to make, I don't know. I, I, make, I get maybe bored it, fast. Yeah. Just make, make impactful changes, make, make impact, make an impact in general. Right. And so, you know, sometimes I don't know how you feel, man. And I'm just going, I'm going on and on here, but it's like, I feel like if I have so much to offer, I just want to offer it all. Right. Yeah. I want to offer it all. I want to, I want to sit and you know, I want to, I want to train. I want to 
I want to coach. I want to look at the P and L. I want to, I want to, I want to have my hands wrapped around absolutely everything sometimes. And, and, and not, a, you know, and the problem is, is, you know, you got to work with people. You got to, you got to be a team player too. So sometimes that selfish attitude works for you. Sometimes that selfish attitude works against you. I think it works for you more than it works against you. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but. Yeah, no. And, and, and I, I agree. I, I feel, to be honest, I felt like, Beltway is at a point, you know, and I love Ryan. He's a very smart guy. Ryan, you know, Grimes is the owner of there. They're in the position that they're going to be successful whether I'm there or not. I feel like I made the impact that I needed to make there. And moving forward, not that I couldn't help, you know what I mean? I, I don't want never downplay myself like that, but um, I don't know. I just felt like there's always a next chapter. And I don't want to say that I get bored, but I get, I, I don't know. I, I like bored. to do, yeah, I like to do different things. And it, it just got to the point where it just, uh, I felt like I was staying for the people because I do love the people there. There's an amazing team. I love all of them. And it was hard to go and especially how I did it. I did what was best for Beltway, not for me. So I literally took a week off. You know, Ryan said, take a week off, you know, make sure this is what you want to do. Um, Ryan was always supportive of me as he always, he, he was the whole time that we've been friends and I've known him. And I went back and I was like, I still, my feeling hasn't changed and we're getting ready to go in the summer. So rather than me being like, oh, Hey, I'm leaving on this day. And we turn it into some sad, somber thing. We just ripped the bandaid off. Yeah. That's pretty smart. And let me, did, did a lot of that have to do with what was going on in your, I, I know your mom's been sick, right? Um, she feeling, is she getting any better? Is she, is, is, did that play, I'm sure that had to play a role in it. Oh, it, it definitely did, man. Stress, a lot of, a lot of stress. And, um, you know, and I appreciate Ryan for understanding because um, the last year to say that I, you know, I mean, I, I've lost weight. I mean, dude, like I, I haven't weighed under 200 pounds since high school, man. Yeah, you look sexy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the move, um, you know, I moved an hour away from where I used to live. Um, so my commute to places is a lot further. Even where I'm coaching right now, you know, where I live in Maryland, I'm coaching on the eastern shore. So I drive an hour plus each way every day. Um, which I really don't mind to be honest. Um, and then my mom with stage four lung cancer and my mom's cancer is not treatable. They're not treating her for her to, to cure it. They're treating her for quality of life. And I've already lost my father. You know, I'm 41 and the sad realization is I'm going to be in my forties and not have either one of my parents at some point. Um, so I'm just trying to spend every moment that I possibly can with her and uh, me and my mom are tight having to take her to different appointments all the time. So, you know, it, it gets to be a lot and at the same time, you know, I I've been with my wife forever. I've actually married the same woman twice and you know, me, yeah, me and my wife, it, it seemed like not intentionally, but we were putting each other last, you know, I, I was, I was putting, you know, financing this family and business and taking care of this, taking care of that. Oh, got to take my mom here. And she's, Hey, I got to take care of the house. I got to take care of the kids. I got to do this. And then at the end, it was like nothing left for each other. And we started feeling that strain and it finally got to the point where we were like, Hey, like, what, what are we going to do? And I'm like, well, I love you. I don't want anybody else. She's like, I love you. I don't want anybody else. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? And we just had to really start, you know, making a conscious effort to put more time into our marriage and not just being mom and dad, but being husband and wife. And sometimes that's just, it happens and that's okay. But as long as you recognize the problem, you know, don't, don't act like it's not a thing, especially in the HVAC or the trades in general, the divorce rate, the drug use rate, all that kind of stuff is extremely high. It's okay to have that problem, but recognize and fucking try to fix it. You know, don't, don't sit around like you're, you know, you can't see because then you're, you're part of the problem, not the solution. Man. I'm sure that's going to resonate with a lot of people for sure. Um, you know, 
<clears throat> it's funny you say that about because sometimes couples can be good with the kids right and they're raising kids and they're busy raising kids and they're busy raising kids and then it's the kids and the kids and the kids and then you know you hear like it's like okay well now the kids are a little bit older and like you know and 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 they took up so much of your time and now it's uh it's another it's another ball game now it's like well now we got to work on 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 us like like people have been married for 15 20 years and then they're like uh why are we raised all the kids like now we gotta work you know that so it's like free time actually it's funny because dana and i have actually had um uh like a lot of time we, we we've had more more time now because the kids are a little bit older right my youngest is gonna be 12 so it it, it does you do you do have to focus on that it, it probably it takes a it's probably hard to admit it it's probably hard to for people for couples to admit like hey like we got to work on us you know this it's yeah, good good of you to say it you know yeah, because people get a new normal and they just accept that well that what we were doing neither one of us were happy so why would we let that be become the new norm you know what i mean so you you got to try to change it and you know and not to get down like some preaching thing um but even though that, you know, I'm an influencer, a podcaster, you're doing the same thing and, and we go on and we're on these fucking phones and I get it, but these can be your best friend and your worst fucking enemy at the same time. And now when I come home, I put this motherfucker down because it was consuming me and I wasn't getting anything accomplished. So now that I've been more disciplined and structured in my time, I'm getting more done, uh, whether it's work or business wise. And I got more time for my family, you know, and the other thing with people's relationships is you're always comparing yourself to somebody else. Fucking stop. It's fake. It's not real. Everybody's happy on social media and you see them in real life and they're miserable fucks. Worry about yourself. Make sure that you and your family are happy and don't worry about people on social media, man. Like just, I know it's easier said than done. And I'm not saying that I've never been guilty of it, but stop comparing yourself to other people, man. Make you and your circle happy. That's mm. all you need to worry about. Care about mm. those people. Who gives a fuck about what other people think? Strong words. And I think in the trades in general and sales, man, I will tell you, long hours. I, I was talking to Joe um, Downey on here. who run, He has a group called uh, In-Home Sales Professionals. Yeah. And we, we were talking about how, bro, like you're especially in our trade. Right. You're in houses sometimes until ungodly hours. You're in building like you're I mean, hell, if you're on call or you're working that night. I mean, dude, I remember like there there were points in time where I wasn't even home. I remember this like in the summers, like I'm walking to my door at 1130 at night every, every night. I'm gone at 9 a.m. I'm back at 1130 p.m. And then I remember working one summer where I worked 50. 52 straight days. I had one day off in 52 days. And I did that to myself, of course, but it's true. And it can definitely strain. what can also help like not being there all the time, but it can definitely strain, definitely strain a marriage. It can definitely strain a relationship and it, it definitely strains relationships with people. And you're right. The drug addiction and the alcoholism and the rampant, whatever it is, the, the, the vices are very rampant in our field. We've seen it. We've seen guys go down. I mean, it's, it is crazy. And you're right on the phone. It's like, put it away. And we're just, you're right. It's like the best thing and the worst thing that like ever happened. And unfortunately, like for people like you and I, where we're also keeping up a social media presence, then we're like, then we're sort of even more attached to it. And I find myself like, I, I need to stay busy regardless. I have to. All right. And my daughter says this to me. My oldest daughter says this to me all the time. She goes, she's like, dad, I know what you're doing. You just are always fending off. The, the demon you're always fending off the depression you're always fending off the anxiety you're always fending off you're always fighting like whatever's coming at you and you keeping busy is like your like drug like dude i'm playing gigs like two days a week i'm freaking doing this another night a week i'm working full time i'm on the board of taca i'm doing this i'm doing that and i'm like you know what? i'm gonna I'm, but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep doing that and i'm gonna stay but i'm still gonna keep those relationships strong with uh you know with my with my with my family because you're right you have to keep those right and i do 
And I always told, and actually my nickname is the dad father. My kids like literally nicknamed me the dad father, which I think is, is, is really cool. Man, I don't it think is awesome. It is pretty cool. But speaking of which, by the way, talking about being late at night and like couples fighting and stuff like that. Have what's, have you ever been in a house where like a couple has like gone at each other's like throats, like maybe even talking about whether or not they're going to do the repair or the replacement or whatever it is. And they've gone at each other, dude, I, I got to uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, bro, dude, I went into this house and, you know, system was old. The people had bought the house. They lived there for a little less than a year. So if you're in sales, you know, okay, so they have no commitment to that system because they didn't, they didn't buy it. They don't give a fuck about it. Um, they just want it to work. So this thing was, you know, R22, 20 years old, blah, blah, blah. Um, I had met the wife when I went in, um, but I was talking to the husband more. He came outside. He was talking to me. He was actually cool, but you know, I, I think that the compressor had died and, and I gave him, I said, well, you know, sadly, brother, you don't, you don't have any, you don't have a good option here. You know what I mean? Gave him the whole spiel. And, um, and, uh, we walked in and we had talked to the wife and I told him, I said, Sally, we're kind of at that replacement phase. And she's like, oh, okay, get some prices. I'm like, yeah, no worries. Yeah. I'm like, let me go grab my stuff. We'll, we'll work this up. And I was just talking to the husband while the husband was like, yeah, I just can't do it right now. We're going to have to wait. And we were in the other room and I said, you know, I, I went to like use the bathroom or something real fast. And when I was walking out, the wife was like, um, so when are you guys going to be able to put it in? And I was like, well, I think your husband's going to wait. And she was like, bullshit, you cheap motherfucker. She gets up, hops up off the couch and walks in the room. And she's like, I'm not going to spend another motherfucking night in this house without no AC because you want to be a cheap mother. They were, she was going off like they were in there arguing. I was like. I, I can step outside and she's like, no, you stay right where you are. I'm like, oh shit. And, uh, they went at it for like 10 minutes, but let's just say they, 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 uh, they bought a nice system that night. Oh, and, uh, you yeah. know, they, they say 80% of the decisions in the household and especially in our field, 80% of the decisions are made by the wife. The oh. wife will make the determining factor as to whether or not they're going to replace the unit or not. Oh, that, that's why I, I I agree. That's why when you know you go and they're like, um, you know, it's just the husband. I'm like, fuck. Um, Chris said, "Sup, players and pimps." I like up, that. What's up? I'm gonna rename this podcast the Players and Pimps Podcast. <laughs> co -ho co co-hosted with Gil and Everett. Um, so check this out, dude. I was in the house. I was in this. So I was in this house. So I was in this house. And, uh, dude, this guy, okay. Okay. I walk in the, the, okay. The wife and the husband are divorced. They're divorced. They're not even, or at least I think they're divorced. He like came by clearly wasn't always living there. I don't know. It was strained. It was weird. Right. And then like the systems down and all this other stuff. Right. And he is standing back. She's going, I want this. I want this. And she's all sad. She's like, I want this and I want this. And no, we getting the new one and we doing this and we doing that. And then he's standing in the background going like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you, Oh yeah. you going to pay. you going to, you going to, you going to pay for this. Like he was, he was, and then he starts laying into her, bro. I'm talking. He starts literally insulting her to a point where I was uncomfortable. He was like, yeah, well, of course she going to, cause you know, she ain't got a nickel to her name and blah, blah, blah. And all this other stuff. And then she's like, no, that's what we're going to do. Oh yeah, we are. And by the way, you owe me this and you owe me that. And you owe me, and bro, I'm telling you back and forth. Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, uh, <laughs> meanwhile, She's picking out home automation stuff too. She's not just picking out HVAC stuff. She's literally picking out all the stuff that she wants, all the cameras in the house that she's going to pay for that we're going to install and the, the doorbell and the floodlight on the thing and everything, bro. It was crazy. And when I tell you, like, I felt so uncomfortable because this guy, he called, I think dude, he might've called her a bitch, like right to her face, like right then and there. I mean, you know, so the, fi I, the, fi the financing cleared so they hey whatever works so i do have another one but i didn't get to witness it but i got to see how it started um this was as a service tech i was just finishing up and i don't know what happened but i guess the wife had found out like that the husband was cheating on her and 
she kicked in the door like she was fucking RoboCop, boy. I mean, she, boom. And what? she's like, you motherfucker. And he's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, you're going to cheat on me and just act like it didn't happen? How the fuck long has it been going on, Todd? And I was like, and we had got done. I was like, all right, man, I'll, uh, you're all good to go. We're all, I'll see y'all later. And uh, I, I, I ended up walking out, but when I was literally putting my stuff back in the fucking van, I could hear them inside screaming. So part of me wishes I would have stayed in there because, uh, yeah, she came in hot and uh, she was kind of a bit, so no wonder he cheated, but still, um, <laughs> just saying, putting my two cents in, but have uh, you ever, have you ever, have you ever had an advance? Like has any, have you ever been in a house where some, somebody made an advance on you? Well, I told like, you, the one story about the guy was going to tip me by letting me bang his wife. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That was you that told that story. Yeah. yeah. And then oh. I also had, um, and I wish, so Mo, uh, is kind of like my protege, um, like a little, little brother or son to me that, uh, works for Beltway now. But, um, years ago when we were at another company, we would go to this, like, it's called Compass Point. I got to be careful what I say because this lady follows me. Um, but she was a divorcee. Her husband had left for a younger chick and literally lived in the neighborhood. So she was living in this multi-million dollar house um, while her husband was still paying for it. And he just bought another one with a 20-year-old chick or whatever. But... I would go there. She would always want me to go do the maintenances and, and whatever it was, she would always want me. And me and Mo went there one day up in the attic and Mo standing right next to me. We just came out of the attic, sweating balls, you know, hundred degrees outside in the summer. And she goes, you can take a shower here if you want. And Mo was like, she ain't talking to me, bro. She's talking to you. And I was like, um, and she was like, yeah, she's like, you can, you can take this shower over here. She's like, if you want, you can follow me. I'll take you in there. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, I'm, I'm all right. I'm like, I appreciate it. I'm like, I'm getting the fuck outside, man. Like I got to go. And, and we walked outside and Mo was like, dude, that chick totally wanted your ding dong kill. Like you, you want me to go get the ticket signed? I'm like, maybe. Cause I'm not, I'm not trying to put myself in some weird predicament. You know what I mean? Dude, this happened literally a couple of weeks ago and I couldn't understand it so i there was I, one of the texts was out of house it was nearby where i was at i pop in i i hadn't done any of these you know what i mean i'm like i'm mostly in the office right so i was like chris says wait was she hot and i just said not really lol she she's she's a good person okay. um she's a good person Dude, I get there. The guy's got like a, a alt. I don't know if it's a priest outfit or something like that, but like something with the Catholic Church. Anyway, so it's there. I see it hanging up. The guy is awesome. He's just a cool guy. I'm like talking to the guy. I went out like I'm looking at everything. He's got problems going here, there, and everywhere, right? So, uh, so that so like, all right, we'll go go outside, and he. I'm like, yeah, I'll go work everything up for you. Like, I don't know. I was I went in my truck, and the tech stayed in there, right? Dude five 15 minutes i go to go back in the house the tech comes out and he goes dude we get it we gotta go we got this is we gotta go i'm like what 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 happened he goes no dude you don't understand this guy just went civil like he just literally just kicked me out and said goodbye and i'm like why he he offered i had a bunch of insulation on me right from the attic and he was like same thing he goes that's what it reminded me of he goes, go, why don't you go shower? Or he offered me a shower. I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm like, it's a weird offer, but like, it, it's fine. Like man I, to man. Mm. Yeah, it was weird. Okay, go shower like in your house. Like, yeah, I don't think I need your shower, but that's cool. Um, So I clean off and uh, and then I go outside. Anyway, come, dude, I knock on the door because the guy's like, no, we got to get out of here. I'm like, hang on. I'm, I'm like, this was a very friendly conversation. I go back and knock on the door. Guy comes out and goes, I paid my bill get out of here i to this day i have no idea what happened no no nothing no clue something transpired <laughs> something transpired in that that very short period of time no idea no idea and i, I gotta tell you i've in all of my years dude i mean like thousands and thousands of calls 
Um, I've never, that's never, ever happened. Thousands of calls. It's, I cannot think of a time where it was like a door slammed on your face where I didn't even, I didn't even do anything. I just walked back to go. Yeah. I kind of like those people like that. The ones that just, they're pissed off at the world and don't really know why. And, um, I just keep killing them with kindness and, and they get angry, but they can't say anything because I haven't been ignorant to them. I'm just like, Oh, I'm sorry. You feel that way. Hope your day gets better. Can I make your day better? What can I do to make your day better? Like they're, they're, they're like this motherfucker. Like God, I'll shut, shut your mouth. Um, I had a lady, uh, today. Matter of fact, it was today. Um, older lady. I get it. It happens. She 100% shit her pants while walking in front of me. Uh, there's there's no way she did not shit her pants um it smelled like something died and uh i was uh what's up mr ian the hr guy um he says i approve of killing with kindness well yeah yeah good thanks thanks uh thanks ian i appreciate that but that um, lady definitely shit her pants though i'm just saying wow can you imagine that like shitting your pants while the technician or sales reps in your house, like literally shitting your pants. Speaking of which, <laughs> um, I, you know what? I'm gonna be vulnerable here. I'm gonna tell a story about myself. <laughs> Please tell me it's you shitting your pants. Almost, <laughs> <laughs> almost. So I went to this house, amazing couple, super cool. I still remember their last name, still remember. Okay, it was a boiler. Okay. And it might have been an oil to gas conversion. I forget. They were in a really nice uh, town. It was like the smaller house part of the town, but very nice town. They were like school teachers. Really cool. I'm sitting there now. You know, when, you know, it's cold or really hot out, like we're on the road all the time, on the road all the time. And then, you know, you like you eat and then like you go and you run calls. And you try to shove food in your mouth in between like calls and shit like that. So I'm sitting at the dining room table and where I'm about to like, you know, go over everything, quote the job or whatever it was. And, and they're sitting there. I got their attention and everything. And, um, uh Oh, I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's no way in the world, right. That I, I'm going to have to figure something out. And I just, I got up and I said, would you excuse me for a minute? And like, <laughs> I, I have a rule. Like I don't, I will not, I, I mean, I'm Unless there's like no shot that I'm able to like, you know, like make it somewhere. I'm, I'm in the house. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not going in this house, dude. I get, they're watching me go out the front door. They're like, where is this guy going? <laughs> I literally leave. I walk out the front door. I, oh man. Once I'll be right back. I freaking book it. I leave. I leave my stuff there, but I grab my truck. Right. I go, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my God. I'm trying to find anywhere, right? Dude, the library, <laughs> the library was open. So I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I walked through the library. I'm like, can't be that hard. I'm just walk in. It's probably right there, right? I walk in. I'm looking around. I'm like, what the? Restrooms, basement. Okay. I walk down to the basement. I go, it's locked. I'm like, oh my God. I go to the librarian. I'm like, hey, um, two, three, four, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Okay, fine. Key to the bathroom. I drive back to the house. This is like 15, 20 minutes go by, right? I want to go back to the house. As I'm walking in, they're like, hey, uh, you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, you know how it is. Oh, man, it rains, it pours. My gosh, my life. Jeez Louise. Where were we? I, I sold the boiler. <laughs> that's hilarious oh man yeah so anyway yeah i had an installer used to work for me um that he uh i went out to look at the job and um we were just down and there's a nice bathroom in there that lady already said hey you guys are more than welcome to use this like whatever awesome customer you know gave us like lunch like some chicken salad that was fucking money anyway um we're outside job's almost done you know i want to say it's like i don't know maybe like one o'clock in the afternoon and that's good, uh, that's a good job you've done it one o'clock man yeah it, it was like a heat pumps uh swap out or whatever it wasn't anything crazy um so 
a- anyway, I, I, the office calls, I'm talking to the office and uh, he's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, man. I look over and I see him hop up into the back of the box truck and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I see him walk back out and he come, I'm like, hold on a second. I'm like, I'll call you right back. And I was like, did you just shit in the back of my truck? And he was like, what? I was like, did you just shit in the back of my van? And he was like, uh, oh. maybe. I was like, why? My side hurts, man. Yeah, I was like, I don't, why? I was like, you could have went downstairs. And he was like, oh, no, it's just weird. I'm like, so you go shit in a bucket in the back of the van, you sick fuck? I'm like, I get it in a pinch and you have nothing else to do. I'm like, but not by choice, you fucking goober. What are you doing? Oh, my God, dude. What an idiot. Yeah. Dude. And, and I, like I said, on the phone, I'm just literally sitting there talking to the office. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, do that. And I'm like, hold on a second. Oh. I'm like, let me call you back. Um. What's He's up, the same Phil? guy that was still. What up, Phil? Dude, Chris says, dude tripping balls came to the door wearing some see-through leotard. Cocking balls out in the open. <laughs> I said, fuck you, dude. Put a towel on it. It was Chris, cool after that. <laughs> Chris, you told nobody. You, you said you weren't going to say anything about that story, all right? It was a bad day. I didn't mean to eat that many mushrooms. Oh, man. Oh, Felipe Grigo. Oh. Phil, dude, Phil has some fucking stories on the first podcast that I ever did. Um, that was like with a person. Um, Phil told this story about a haunting and I'm telling you, dude, you have to listen to this story. I'm going to tell it my, in my way. He's at the table. There's arguments going on, whatever it is. They're trying to figure out whether they want to do the job. I mean, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. All of a sudden. The husband comes up and he goes like this and he slams his hand down on the table and he goes, we're not doing this. We're getting other quotes. That's it. And as he slammed his hand down on the table, right? The light bulb above their heads in the kitchen burst and popped. And then like, it was the craziest thing he'd ever seen. And he was like, earlier on in the conversation, they kept yelling, Mom, stop. Mom, would you just stop? Like they're yelling up the stairs. And because he kept hearing stuff going on up there. And they're like, he's like, is your mom like, is she sick? Whatever. Like, they're like, no, my mom's dead. But she like makes all this noise up there all the time. Like, bro, crazy. crazy. I think I watched that episode when he said that. Oh, because I want to say I heard that. Um, Speaking of that, Phil, you got to come on my show one time, man. I'll get you to come on, buddy. Um, to answer your question, yes, uh, Phil, go on a show. Chris asked, so what pl- pl- platform is everybody watching? Um, you see, yes, there's a YouTube chat. Um, there's also a Facebook live chat and, um, there's a lot of people that chime in on Facebook uh, and I say, unfortunately, but it just is what it is. I get mo- most of the people, I think just, you know, they see my feed on Facebook, they click in and they, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. I'm not as super famous as Mr. Gilkavy yet. So I don't have the, uh, the YouTube following i've seen it. it's crazy when you actually go into like a live episode with gill because like on his youtube chat he gets like 30 people every episode and like minimum like 25 people and what's even crazier is that they do which is really cool for our industry and i didn't even know about this until after my podcast with the misfits of hvac where you guys do a live hangout you just do a hangout you don't even do a podcast. You just do a hangout where you click and then people just join and then you guys just shoot the shit. And, you know, Jen Manzo is telling me HVA Chicks, uh, Manzo, Misfits, HVAC and every other podcast out there. Um, she was telling me that um, it's like a, it's like a social it's very social and I'm very much a part of this social group, but I also feel a little bit outside of it. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's taken a little bit of time for people to, because they see sales tales and really it could have been sales and service tales. But the reality is, is like, it just sounded better to put sales tales and, and, and that's fine. Like, and I also didn't want to l- limit it. I really wanted getting in-home sales reps and everything else. And I actually also believe that everything is a sale. So everything we do is sales. So even if you're selling a service, it's a sale. So 
but it took me a minute because I would post in like her group and then they would be like, fuck this guy. Who the fuck is he? We don't need a fucking mother salesman in here. I'm like, bro, I'm a 15 year veteran in HVAC, like watch an episode. And then they're like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're all to them. Like sales is a dirty word. It's just, it it's get over it, man. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 <laughs> Dude, it's we're bad. We're so pat, we're so past it. You've helped so many people also with like resources and people that you've had on the podcast to really help them through that. Like, and like, dude, and we talked about this and it, it, it was a scandalous sort of topic and it came up in the, in the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Um, Chris said, I'm a fan of the energy and I'll be looking for your stuff everywhere. I appreciate you, bro. Um, <clears throat> so like, uh, we had a little back and forth about like, okay, sales and service and, you know, whatever. And, and companies like, you know, making these guys like sell and stuff like that. And my advice is always the same. Like if you work for a company, you want to be a fix it guy, please go be a fix it guy. Don't work for those companies that they require you to perform some sort of you know, sale. If you just want to fix stuff like, dude, there's so many companies, there's a shortage of tradesmen in our industry the likes of which in the next five years is going to be almost insurmountable how many tradesmen are needed. So you can definitely find yourself. Unfortunately, you know, you come out of trade school, you need a job, you, you find the companies that are, you probably know the brand names of the most. And those happen to be, pro a lot of those happen to be some of the more salesy companies. Um, yeah. And I agree with that, but I want to say this to all the people that say I'm a fix it guy. Um, that's fine. Wanting to fix. I want to fix things. Uh, I consider myself a very good technical person. And if I can fix something, I will. But then again, it's not my decision what I do. Me as the expert, I'm supposed to provide the options to the customer. They'll tell me what they want to do. And for the fix it people, when you go out and you change that capacitor and you fucking roll, I hate to break it to you. You're not doing what's best for the customer. You're doing 100%. what's best for you. 100%. So that's the discussion we have to have. I get it. You can offer things honestly. The way that I teach these guys to do, I want you, I always say, I want to make sure the system is safe, it's efficient as possible, and I want to bring anything that is not you know, out of manufacturer specification to your attention. And that's what we do. I say, list everything. Show it to the customer. If they're like, yeah, I don't want to do any of that, okay. But guess what? If they call back two weeks later and one of those caused an issue, you just validate it yourself. Do you, don't you think they're going to believe you next time? Like you can do it honestly. The system isn't dishonest. The person is. Oh, oh so, dude. I love that. So don't that. be dishonest. The system isn't dishonest. The person is. Chris says, and this is a very good compliment to you. He says, I was that way until I started watching Gil and Kelly back in the day. We sell something every day. I never looked at it any different than a used car salesman. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It tracks. For Chris it is makes, good people. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good quote though. I like that quote, what you just said, like the system's not crooked. Like you are, you know? Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and then oh, all shizzles. the people, yeah. And all the people, and I won't say names, even though it sometimes on my show, I think I'm going to is some of these sales coaches out there. And I think that's part of what made me want to help coach people is because I'm not them. The ones that are, you know, look at my Lamborghini, man. I, I got the biggest dick in the world, man. Look at this. And it's just, they're, they're giving all this flashy stuff and they're selling a pipe dream. You know, they do a one day class. They hand out the same bullshit. They don't care if that stuff ever gets implemented. And it, I just think it's bullshit. And, and some of them are good at what they do. I'm not saying they're not good at what they do. I just don't like how they go about it. Um, and that's just, <laughs> that's just not me. Yeah. Okay. So, and I know that we've spent a, a good amount of time on a couple of podcasts talking about this and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Let me tell you how that makes as a sales coach that I do every day. Okay. Th that gets me sort of infuriated. Right. Um, because here's what happens and this happened and, you know, Landon had said something in some groups and some other people had said something in some groups and it was like, Oh yeah, be careful of all these gurus or whatever, bro. Let me tell you something. Um, it sheds such a bad light on things that then when somebody who's highly ethical and very successful at what he does tries to actually, you know, talk to a company, 
it, 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 it's actually driving people into only doing next star, only doing SGI and only doing the really expensive coaching programs because they're afraid that someone's actually going to like take advantage of them. When I know personally, like three to four different people who are amazing independent coaches. And so this, it, it, it really did. They kind of ruined the, they kind of ruined the whole independent coach game for people that actually wanted to, you know, uh, that, that are good at it regardless. Anyway. Yeah. I digress. Me um, too. Gil, let me ask you a question. I ask this question on every podcast and you know it, you know, this question, what is one interaction, one call that you ran a customer that lives with you wherever you go, you take this person everywhere. Hmm. So this one is not really a funny story, more of a sentimental one. Well, that's typically what these are. Typically, these are the sentimental ones, the meaningful ones. For me, it's definitely a a very sentimental one. So, yeah. So I had it had to happen a couple of times. But the first one, um, you know, God rest her soul, Miss Joyce. She was a 87 year old woman. Um, I had went out and this is probably, you know, Christ, I'm talking, you know, 16 years ago, Um, but I'll never forget her. I would go and I did a call one time and we just kind of clicked and talking and her kids lived out of state and she was just a lonely lady. And I would sit there and talk to her. It got to the point where she used to call in for calls just for me to sit there and talk to her and have lunch. And I'm talking, we did this for like a couple of years. You know, like it went um, and, you know, I show her pictures of my kids and, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. Granted, at that time, um, only the boys were around. My daughters weren't thought of yet, but uh, she ended up getting sick and like I would play chess with her, all this kind of stuff. Long story short, she ended up getting sick and I went and I visited her in the hospital um, and after she passed away, I ended up going to her funeral and her viewing and her son and her daughter came up to me and they said, Gil, we just want you to know, first of all, it's a pleasure to meet you. You have no idea how much my mom would talk about you and you have no idea how much you meant to her. And it just, it kind of crushed me and I will never, ever forget that woman ever. And because of that, I had two other ones. Um, Mr. Bernard, a World War II veteran. I would go listen to his stories and the shit that he would tell me about World War II, flying over the English Channel and wrecking a plane. The two people with him died. He had to play dead to the uh, the Japanese, and the guy got close enough. He said he pulled a sidearm and shot him in the face. Like, I mean, like the stories that he would tell. Like, um, so Miss Joyce, I'll never forget. But because of that, I had two others experiences, not quite as in depth as her, but. Um, I think that's why when I podcast, I love just hearing people's stories. I just love to get to know people and hear their story. And um, I'll never, ever forget Miss Joyce. Like I, I learned as much from that 80, the relationship I had with that 87, 88 year old woman than I've had with some of my best friends that I've known my whole life. I'll never forget that woman. Mm. Wow. It's funny to think that a call into a service company led to an end of life friendship. Yeah. Matter of fact, the chess board that me and her would play, I still have it. The son gave it to me when I went to the viewing, not the funeral. Um, I, I stayed there and I was there the, the whole, I mean, it was starting to get awkward cause I didn't know everybody, but I wanted to pay my respects and I met the son and the daughter and I said, hey, I'm going to get ready to leave here soon, but I'll be at the funeral tomorrow. I just want to, you know, I confirmed the arrangements of where it was. And he said, he told me and he said, hey, hold on one second before you leave. I got something for you. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, I thought he was going to give me a picture or something, to be honest, uh, which he did. <laughs> but he gave me that chessboard and he said, I just couldn't, I couldn't think of anybody else to have this except for you. And, um, mm, I, 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 yeah, I, I still have it. It's actually, it's in a box. My basement still wrecked, but, um, it, it's in one of those boxes. Cause I still have it. Mm. Wow. That brought me back <clears throat> all the way to like, uh, when I first started and I told this story 
This is actually not about a customer, but it's about, it is about perseverance and how people can be wrong. When I first started in this industry, if Phil's still watching, he'll know this story. <clears throat> when I first started in this industry, Brandy knew, didn't know the industry. And I had this manager who was an old school guy. This guy laid into me. He beat the shit out of me. He really, really beat the shit out of me. And I, when I say this, <clears throat> I remember I was trying, I went 0 for 11. So I started backwards, right? I started, yes, Bill Gray. I started backwards. I started, <clears throat> I started in sales learning we, months I spent in a classroom learning how to do everything, all the load calcs and everything else. And like, that's how I learned in this business. I had to go backwards to the master license. And that didn't start first. Most people start from tech. I went the other direction. Right. But I would, they, they want to put together a sales team. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me, let me get, let me get involved. Well, I went 0 for 11, my first 11 calls. Okay. Now, you know, that I've had a tremendous amount of success in my career. Right. And, <clears throat> but my, my, my beginnings were really, really bad. And he actually, I remember having a conversation with him and he said, Gil, I'll never forget this. He goes, you're in the wrong fucking business. You know that you're in the wrong business. You, pff, man, I don't know what to tell you. You know what? I don't think it's going to work. You're in the wrong fucking business. And like, imagine me like making, I got little tiny baby kids and I'm like, oh my gosh, like my heart's pounding. I'm like, well, shit. I'm like, fuck my boss just basically told me to go fuck myself. Right. And I'm like, all right, I got a choice here. I got a choice. I got a choice to fucking give up or be like, you know what? Let's go. And um, I'll tell you what, man. I uh, I went into his office like the next day and I stood in and stood as that he, he was he was a real pompous kind of guy. I stood in front of his desk, bro. And I was like, hey, I want to let you know something. I'm here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do as best as I fucking can for as long as I can. I, I'm, I'm going to literally I'm going to do my damnedest. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm not going anywhere. And that was my commitment right then and there. And wouldn't you know? Wouldn't you know? It, it turned it turned out it turned out pretty well after a while. But 0 for 11 and getting told that you shouldn't do this. And now, you know, I'm I run a whole organiz, you know, whole sales organization, and I've got all the plaques and all the rings and all the stuff. And it's it's pretty cool, man. I mean, you know, you know, the cool cool to get, you know, get a plaque that says, you know number 11 sales rep and you know through ACA or whatever it was just cool uh, it was anyway yes chris chris found the the i don't know why he wanted to go from uh i guess there was nobody else in the youtube chat so he decided to go to facebook but yeah he was the only one comment and he kept seeing us talk about other people and chris is probably like who the fuck yeah i i hey hey tony have you ever have tony you ever says been, have you you yeah, have you've you ever shit in a buck in the back of a truck or you've only done sales i I believe I never had to shit in the back. I, I never had to shit in the back. I've had to shit. I don't think I actually have shit in the back of a truck. Gil, yeah. have you shat in the back shat in the back of a truck? No, I've I've always found other options to not shit in my truck. Um, but uh to his other one, you know, uh I need to hear the air scrubber pitch before I decide to follow him or not. Um <laughs> Hey, Tony, man, you ever had a, a summer day where you just walk outside and you take a deep breath and you, you really get that fresh air and you're like, ah, well, what if I told you I can give you that in your house? You can have it every day. You don't got to worry about it being summertime. Sold. Yeah. Give me your money, bitch. <laughs> HR guy just says uh, sometimes employees need to be told to fuck off. Just have to be careful how you do it. So, yeah, we know this, Ian. When there's a proper way to say this, let me, I'll, I'll try to, I'll, I'll, I'll be you in, in explaining this. Well, you could tell them to fuck off, but you have to be aware of uh, OSHA regulation 5.6.4 and all the other boring shit, too. Stop being so boring, Ian. Hey, but that that's what he does. And Ian's very good. And uh, he helped us with a lot of headaches at, um, at Beltway. We, we'd oh, always wow. call him and oh, be like, cool. Yeah. Hey, we got this situation. What do we do? And he'd be like, Oh, do this, this, and this. So, um, anybody out there, if you are in that company and you do not have your processes for HR in place, um, you should definitely give Ian a call. Like he will save your ass. I promise you. Um, Ian, so. there's a little, there's a little space on the top right of my screen over here. It could actually, it could say the HR guy if you, for the right price. Yeah. He said, I invite you to reconsider your life choices. Yeah. Um, 
So, Gil, uh, funniest shit that's happened to you in the house. Funniest thing ever. Oh, man. Or with an employee or maybe on a ride along. Let's see. Um, uh, I So, I'm trying to think of funniest. I don't know why some awkward shit's coming to my head. Ooh, yeah, go awkward. Go awkward. So, two. One, uh, I would go... And I'd been there a couple of times, the older couple, and the woman was uh, apparently a painter. And I'd been there like six or seven times over the years. They've been a long-term customer. Um, and this is when I was a, you know, I was a service tech. And um, in the basement, like I'm working on the the furnace. Never forget, it was a, you know, carrier infinity system, you know, was kind of like top of the line at the time. And uh, I'm going through checking everything. And there's a room over here. And normally that door is closed. Well, it's open. And I do know that's her painting room. Dude, there's a like a early 20-year-old girl sitting on a stool, butt fucking naked. And Wait, this she woman butt fucking, or she was just naked. She's butt naked. The old oh. woman is painting her. And I'm let me just tell you this: it was the longest fucking maintenance I've ever done in my life. Um, because I'm just sitting there like. And the girl was good looking girl too. So I'm like, holy shit. Like I just sat there and watched it. I'm like, uh, okay. And I'm like, and the, the girl who was naked, like she knew that I was looking like she, she, there's no way she could not have known the old woman didn't know. Um, and then finally I'm looking at my, I'm like, fuck, I can't stay here anymore, man. So otherwise I'm going to have to beat off and get it over with or something. But, um, <laughs> the other one is actually when I was at, hold on. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Phil says, Tony Doney, Mr. Customer, the air scrubber will remove the shit smell. <laughs> 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 That's funny. That's funny. Oh man. There you go. There's your sales pitch. Um, <laughs> Hey, we had you know another this, one. You know this smell you got back here? It's going <laughs> to take care of all of it, all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that turd's going to be long gone. Um, But, yeah, we had another one. Guy, super cool customer. Um, The guy had a... Uh, maybe he's just blessed with a, with a big old cock. I don't know. But... <laughs> we're. The, Dude, the guy is must have been eating his blue chew or something because he's down there just having a conversation, just and I'm and it's not what just you, me. Like through his pants, like he's oh like, dude, yeah. It's just like and he's standing. We have one guy who yeah. Levitt Levitt doesn't work anymore, but a god, I wish Levitt was watching um because he would confirm this story. Um, and like the guys right here and Levitt's like leaning down. So the guy's dick is like maybe a foot away. And I'm like, Oh, I'm supposed to be the boss there. And I'm trying to keep it together and not just start cracking up laughing. Like, oh. you know, like put your dick away, sir. Um, oh, and it would God. happen several times. And we just, it was an inside joke that we would make. And I'm like, Hey man, the old man's packing some heat. Give him, you know what the fuck it's called. Good. Oh. And he was a nice guy. Like, he was the sweetest dude. So that's what – it wasn't like he was a shitbag or nothing. But, yeah. It, and that happened several times. That wasn't just one time. So I was like, yeah, maybe his blue chew's kicking in, man, and he's just taking that bitch a little early. I don't know. Dude, that reminds me of this house that I went into where there was this, like – it was like an older couple. I think probably – I want to say she was early 60s, maybe late 50s. I, that's what I want to say, right? And he's there, and they're, like, super cool, and I could tell they're kind of, like, whatever. And they're pretty well off or whatever. And she's wearing, like, real fit, like, a really nice house, and uh, wearing, like, really fit, like, yoga pants and shit like that. And she's standing there, and then she just puts her leg up on the counter – like this and then she's like she's like stretching like this <laughs> and just moving back and forth in like a humping motion but like while she's having a very serious conversation with me as if she's in the middle of her yoga lesson and like she was clearly doing this as a performance right and i'm like um i got are there upside down pineapples in here like what is going, <laughs> what is going on chris says a gilf yeah I guess maybe she, maybe she was a gilf. Um, 
<clears throat> there have definitely been it, it it is always interesting the generational differences between like let's say in their 70s now they're still active they're still whatever and then like going all the way down through like millennials and then even gen z at this point in time it is very interesting because a i find i always found we did a lot of senior citizens i always found that a lot of seniors in their 70s would get like they would look really nice and presentable and the house would be like vacuumed and everything like when we got there like in other words like they always made sure that they looked really nice and everything. I, I, it's amazing to me. Like it was almost like a formality maybe. I don't know. But I think as you like gone down like the line, like I've got, you know, I mean, I feel like some, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong, but like Gen Xers are like, fuck you. I don't give a fuck what you think. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like sweatpants, sweatpants, fucking dude. I, I, I always love those houses where it smelled like smoke inside. Like um, my dad smoked uh, growing up as a kid. And, uh, and like, you know, he, he shouldn't have, like my mom had problems with her lungs, but like he would be like, and, and every fucking time it'd be like, he'd be like smoking in the basement. Right. And he like thinks that smoke doesn't travel like you know, up. And then like, you know, my mom would be like, Dow, 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 Dow. and then my dad would be like, Oh, you know, it's from Brooklyn. He's like, I'm not fucking smoking. What are you talking about? Well, I'm, fucking smoking. I'm not fucking smoking. I'm not fucking smoking. Oh, you're fucking crazy. Like that was, that was, the, that was like every day in my house. Right. So like, um, I, I think like I could never own or want a house that like smelled like smoke. But like when I tell me that you don't go into houses, you know, having smoked or whatever, you don't go into houses now or in the past where it smells like smoke inside and there's smoking inside. And there's not something very like warm and inviting about it for some reason. It no, brings, well, me, brings me nostalgia. I'm a smoker, but I don't smoke in my house. Um, no one does anymore. But, uh, yeah. but every once in a while, though, you will. You'll go in, and that house will be fucking smoked in, like, no problem. Oh, yeah. You go to these people's house, and it's just like, and it's funny, as a smoker, like, normally as a smoker, you don't smell it, you know, like somebody who doesn't smoke. Um, but I do. And you go into those houses, and I'm like, I'm home. Mommy? You know what I mean? Because uh, my, my mom smoked, you know. Growing yeah. up, my dad smoked, but I never saw him smoke. He quit before I was born. But um, my mom always smoked in the house. She didn't give a fuck. So um, she would smoke here if I let her and I tell her no. So she sits in the garage all day and just fucking fucking chain smokes. What's the biggest curveball you've ever been thrown? Like in a house where you were like, like you thought something and you were like, whoa, wait a minute. Nope. Ooh. Um. I'll tell you what, do you need a second to think about it? Because, yeah. because I can tell you right now, I went into a house that literally was dilapidated to the point where I, it smelled like, dude, they need like seven air scrubbers. Okay. It smelled so bad. It smelled like fucking like, like I'm talking like mold and mildew to the point where I didn't even want to sit down. It was so, it was disgusting. They were nice people ish. Right. But I call that Bigfoot's dick. Oh, dude, it was so bad. And I was like, I was like, oh, I got to sit. I know went to sit on the edge of the couch because I didn't want to sit on the couch because I'm like, dude, my eyes are going to water like everything fucking sucks. Right. I'm like, dude, it was fucking crazy. And I like literally like I actually did pitch an air scrubber or like a air cleaner. And they were like, no, no, we're good. We don't need that. I'm like, fuck. Yes, you do. You really need this. You need this. You don't know you're living in mold. There's, there's it's fucking mold, right? Dude, they fucking stroked a check for like $16,000. I was like, whoa. I mean, I, I quoted everything and they went with like the tippy top option. I was like, oh, uh, oh, okay. I mean, that's cool. Curveball. Yeah, she needs a match. Yo, well, so in that situation, to be similar, I had a, um, Allison says, Phil Grego, he knows from experience that that shit smell doesn't come out. No, Allison, it does not come out. <laughs> That's funny. Um, had this lady in uh, Brooklyn, Maryland. So it, it's kind of like you different know, Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, di different Brooklyn. Not this um, Brooklyn. Yeah, no. Our, our, sadly, our Brooklyn's probably shittier. But um, anyway, this lady is in a row home she's in the end unit house is fucking disgusting it's gross there was a hole in the fucking wall i could see outside from inside and it wasn't a window it was a fresh air intake yeah yeah i guess yeah um 
and uh, her system ended up, ended up being bad. And she's like, well, you know, if I got to replace it. And, and I was thinking like, oh, well, I'm going to offer her cheaper options. She don't have much. And I started going through the cheap stuff. And she goes, you don't have anything nicer. She's like, I'm a Cadillac girl. And I was like, okay. Um, so same situation. She picked my top option. And I want to say it was like 16, 17 grand, same ballpark. And, um, and I said, Hey, well, how, how would you, I assumed I said, so how would you be financing this? And she goes, honey, I'm not financing this. <laughs> Hold on a second. Straight cash, yeah. homie walks upstairs, comes downstairs like a fucking pay less shoe box and fucking like drug money, fucking stacks of fucking hundred dollar bills. And she's like, I'm gonna put it down a down payment. Give me $10,000 cash. And I, I'm like, what? the fuck i'm like why don't you fix the fucking hole in the wall um because she needs air bro she yeah, needs air bro wasn't expecting that at all C. but that's a prime example that don't ever prejudge houses don't fucking prejudge bro you have no idea no chris says i, I live in the part of oklahoma where older guy, where old guys wear coveralls all the time live in an okay house and drive a farm truck that can buy anything that you can have cash ridiculous yeah that's that tracks that tracks yeah. yeah i believe it you get in them rich houses i remember one going in one big house guy had like a brand new mercedes um house go board. to look at look at the stuff and um it looked like he just moved in there was no yeah, furniture no furniture no furniture nowhere. no there furniture was dishes, yeah ditches in the sink there was a tv and like a couch in the living room you go upstairs there was a mattress on the floor everything else is empty and i asked him I'm like oh did you you know you, you just moving in he's like no nah, i've lived here a couple of years and i'm like oh, okay i'm like oh so you're you're moving out and he was like nope but i'm like okay well this is fucking weird i'm just gonna leave this to fuck alone come to find out it was winter time his heat exchanger was fucking cracked the guy never changes filters airflow was a problem big ass crack i pulled the motherfucker out and showed it to him there was no denying it um and We talk about, you know, he's, you know, I was like, it probably makes sense. The whole thing hasn't been taken care of, just replaced the whole thing. But worst case scenario, we can just do the furnace and um, try to do financing. He cannot get approved to replace the whole thing. So, you know, how it works. I call the finance company, you know, hey, is there a way to get this done? Can we just do the furnace only? And they were like, if he puts a thousand dollars down, we could finance the rest. The guy looks at me and says, I don't have that kind of money. I'm like, what mm. okay i left there with nothing the guy had no heat he didn't I have any money either <laughs> this is funny skip says love the podcast bro hvac is classy and never ceases to surprise and i can't figure out if he's actually being facetious when he says it's classy or he's saying like no it's actually pretty classy but it i mean based on this podcast and the conversations we have i'd say i'm gonna check the not so classy box but hey wh what do i know Hey, um, we, we can it, be classy. It, 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 I, there was this beautiful house, bro. Okay. Yeah. Skip's kidding. Um, uh, there's this be beautiful house. Okay. I mean, it's gorgeous. There's a young couple They get home. There's all this damage in their ceiling. The guy that was there before, unfortunately screwed up the drain line for the air. He fixed the, 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 the AC upstairs and the drain, but the drain line, he pitched it wrong and actually ended up leaking through the coil. The whole they walked in from vacation. The entire ceiling of this beautiful house was like toast, bro. They needed to get thousands of dollars worth of damage, right? They bought this house. There is nothing in this house. There's this young couple with a baby, right? Come to find out, like the husband goes in another room. It's not a husband. They like, they like met they're like professionals and oops and they had a baby but they're like well fuck it let's pretend to be a family and then they decided to like move in together and you know cohabitate and like try to be a family or whatever it was and meanwhile she literally is like she's like yeah we would have never gotten fucking together and bought this house if it wasn't for this baby so they're like okay nothing like i'm like well you know we gotta we're gonna replace the unit they're like well um, I mean, we don't really have the money and I'm like, okay. And then they're like taking like the longest term financing. And so like, well, he goes to show you really don't know. You really don't know. They look like all pimped out in their brand new, beautiful house in Chester, New Jersey. And they had all this, you know, you know, literally beautiful, you know, but 
you never know, bro. And then mm. you got people living in a, a no joke, living in a trailer who are like, bro, I got you flipping. Here's your yeah. cash. Here's your cash. Yeah. Right. It's, it, it's crazy. You definitely can't prejudge. You do the best of your ability based on what's provided. You give the options to the customer. I, I always say, you know, I recommend you decide that's, let, let let them decide and whatever they decide to do it they gotta live with it but you have to know what you're offering how to explain it um you know when asked don't over explain i feel like that's what happens too much and people go in there and over explain you talk yourself out of stuff so yo do you ever uh have you ever um had a customer with a weird fetish or like weird shit in the house where you're like hmm that doesn't really that seems weird and out of place. Speaking of which, I think it was Phil sent me a picture like a couple of months ago. And like, I, tr it was like a where's Waldo picture. Cause it was a picture of just like the living room. And I'm like scanning the picture. Cause I'm wondering what, maybe it was John. And I'm wondering why he's sending me this picture, right? It's a living room. You see the TV I'm scanning all over. Right. <laughs> and right, dude, there's like an end table, like, in the living room and right on it is this humongous purple dildo and it's just sitting there right in the living room in all its glory and there's like a there's like a screen door like right there i'm like oh well that's that's what i'm getting this picture for but i like that he didn't yeah <laughs> phil just said it was purple it was purple. yeah it was purple yeah uh a purple so just think about that right oh yeah that was that was funny. But have you ever had anybody that had like a weird fetish or a weird collection of stuff? I had a guy who had a st stacks of news. He was crazy. He had stacks of newspapers organized in magazines. Dude, when I tell you everywhere, every dude, everything, I think they were actually like date organized stacks, like walking through this old 112, 115 year old house. I'm like, this is fucking weird. There's like these stacks of fucking old newspapers just piled up, just piled up. Weird. I've seen that, but not neat. I've seen hoarders like that. It's oh, nothing, yeah. nothing neat about it. I've seen some pretty rough hoarding situations. Um, trying to think of one that was weird. Um, I remember a guy that was, he uh, taxidermy and he had like, it was a bunch of cats and dogs and he said that they were all his old pets. And the guy was like 50. And I'm like, who the fuck has this that many animals? I'm well, like, yeah, dude... over the years, bro. I mean, you could have a couple dogs you know, at a time and then they die. And then you get a couple other dogs. You know what I mean? Give me a new dog. It, it was a lot, though. I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, is this guy like off in his animals on purple purpose? Like just finding like stray animals and like so he can... It, it was it was definitely weird in the poses they were in. Um, I Ugh. might even be able to find pictures if I find them, I'll send them to you. But um, that would probably be probably be the the weirdest one. I mean, I've seen dildos left out and you know stuff like that. That's been weird. Or one guy that I thought it was him and his daughter, and it was not his daughter, and it was one hundred percent illegal. Um, there was no way that that fucking girl was over 18 and this motherfucker was like 45 at the time. So probably should have called somebody, uh, but I did Dude, somebody in one of the groups sent me a, a, a message about a story about that. Like they were actually, and they, they called the cops and then they were, they ended up getting subpoenaed to court. The guy was actually, he was trafficking women. And they mm. caught and they, they 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 caught they caught him. They arrested him. Actually, the cops said that they were onto him in some sort of way, but they couldn't get enough evidence to get the uh to get the 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 warrant to go in there. But because the service tech was in there while he was fixing the furnace, the guy was right behind him. He was like, just fucking fix the furnace. And he looks over and he sees like fucking food holes, bro, like the slits in the doors, and he can hear what's going on or whatever. And he's like, Holy shit, like this guy has fucking prisoners in this house and he called the cops cops went out there they arrested the guy they they they, they saved the girls the guy it was a beautiful story a terrible story but beautiful that he was able to like get them out of there bro They're, oh those stories they oh but yeah dude service technician that i knew got the homeowner locked him in a, a closet 
lot. Dude, Gov said, oh, it's it's through here. Shoved him in, closed the door, locked it, left him in there. He was he barely had any cell phone service, but somehow he was able to like call out and like call like dispatch or whatever it was. And then they called the cops. Cops get there. He's like, no, no, no. I didn't lock him in the door. Uh, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Uh, it was an accident. Uh, the door closed. I couldn't open it up and blah, blah, blah. True story, bro. That was in there for like an hour. I'd have beat that guy's fucking ass. <laughs> I'll take that jail trip. I, I got bail money for that. <laughs> yeah, I'd have beat his ass. Yeah. I've never, I don't remember there ever being a violent altercation in a house. Do you? Have you ever seen like a fight happen? No. Or almost get into a fight? No, not at the house I've been in. I've been at houses and seen stuff happen like across the street especially you're working in baltimore city dude it's, it's like going to the fucking zoo so i mean you definitely see some shit you know gunshots and stuff like that um but i've never the call i've been at i've never had i've never had it happen um oh no i, I take that back uh obviously we all hate when people call like two HVAC companies to give them a quote and they book it for the same fucking time. Um, well, a house next door, it was two like solar guys. I think um, they weren't HVAC. So I forget what trade they were in, but they weren't HVAC. I know that. Um, and I guess they got booked at the same time and they're outside, like talking shit to each other. And I'm just sitting out there like laughing. I'm like, Oh, this is kind of funny. I'm going to listen to these dudes. Um, it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. They're slowly getting closer. And it seems like they're talking shit, but that's all it's going to be. And all of a sudden, the one guy just goes, whack, hits the dude right in the face. The guy gets up and he's like, oh, it's on now, bitch. Dude, they fought. They were going at it for must have been 15 minutes. What? Neighbors came out. They're watching. Fights are them. like five. Se they're th most fights are 30 seconds to like maybe a minute. Well, that's what gets me this. Okay. It was at least like 10 minutes. I mean, it, it, it was definitely a good bit and it wow. wasn't quick. It, it was like movie fight where like they hit him, guy stumbles, falls down, gets up. The other guy hits him. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? This is great. And then the thing is, after that, they both got in their fucking trucks and left. Like, no, not none or neither of them actually went into the house. So, um, that, that was pretty funny. That is funny. What's the most, you ever run a famous call? Like a guy, a famous guy or like a football player or like an athlete or something like that a politician. So I have, uh, around here, the ones that I've done personally, um, I did, uh, Dean Pease, who was the Ravens defensive coordinator was also for the Patriots. And then he went to Tennessee. Um, I did his house. Um, and, uh, shit what's his name the fuck rudy see the movie rudy right yeah the black guy in rudy oh wow that, that's like his boss yeah yeah Damn. yeah yeah. rock hudson yes no not rock hudson no 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 no, no. rock um Ro his name is rock something no it's charles um Oh, you're right. He had a show called the Rock. Rock in the yes. 90s. Yeah. Yes. Charles, oh, yeah. Dutton. Charles, Charles Dutton. Dutton. Charles Dutton. Charles Dutton. Charles Dutton. Yeah. He, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. He's He's got that thing about him. I remember. Yeah. That, that's how cool. Was he a cool guy? Yeah. He, he, he was awesome. Towards the end, he ended up getting um like sick and we deal with his, his family or whatever. But uh, he oh. lives in Marriott'sville, Maryland. He was a he was a cool dude. Oh, wow. Yeah, my buddy Chris, who we all worked with, he went to rent a sales call at Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill's house in uh, in South South Orange, New Jersey. That was interesting. Yeah, Lauren Hill like Fuji's Lauren Hill, like yeah, that? like 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 yeah, like is, is, is he is he a black guy? Strum in my pain. He's not no. Oh, because she's a racist cunt. For the record. <laughs> well, for the record. Um, I, uh, I don't think the deal happened, even though he sold the job. I'll just leave it like that. Um, <clears throat> um, so I don't know. I don't think anybody can watch. I think I, anyway, um, before we go, anything you want to talk about, anything you want to 
cover anything you want to express anything that's on your mind um just i guess it's hard because i'm always in front of a camera you know a couple times a week but it's people out there man for one be the best version of yourself stop making fucking excuses discipline yourself and like i said before stop trying to look at other people to make yourself happy and stop being ignorant when it comes to the trade for example when we say when you say the word sales and people are like oh he's a fucking sales guy like stop you're not you're not fucking helping yourself by being a douchebag like that it's okay that you want to be honest but don't be ignorant and the same guys that are like, I don't sell inverters, man. All I need is a 16 seer two stage. You're a dipshit. I'm, I'm just telling you, you're, you're a dipshit. And I will debate you any day, all day. And I will kill you with facts because that's just, it's a stupid argument and you make yourself sound dumb. It's educate yourself. You know what I mean? Like, just don't, don't do these lopsided opinions and give back to each other, man. Like we said earlier, we're in a shortage there's not enough of us. So by you helping somebody else get better, your job is not in jeopardy. Okay? So we got to get back to the old days where we help each other and we try to lift our trade up. And the more of us that do that and do it honestly, we're going to get these shit. We're going to force these shit bags, these chuck in the trucks that are doing things messed up out of the industry when we start raising the bar. And I think there's a movement happening with a bunch of us. Uh, like the, you know, my buddy, ben, our friend Ben Poole with HVAC Tactical and the awards and that movement. There is a movement happening. And if we all get on board, we're going to make an impact. It's that simple. That's awesome, buddy. Dude, I love you, man. I seriously, I too, ever brother. since I've, ever since I met you, I've been, uh, I just, I just enjoy your company. We've gone out a bunch of times. We've been to different, you know, events and whatnot. I hope to see you soon. Um, and, um, I actually, you know what? I have an interview coming up with the the owner uh, of the CEO of Skillcat. Actually, wanted to have an interview um, with me. I don't know if you use Skillcat or you've you're familiar with it, but familiar. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that was pretty cool, and that's and that's a very HVAC centered thing because I go off the rails a little bit. I bring in other in home salespeople and other professionals and whatnot, and I even had a, a one about these girls that were on the netflix documentary the program so i i i've gone a little off the rails a little bit but uh but yeah the the, the skill, skill cat um i have um i have kathy nielsen coming on i think she's next week uh the chicken lady and um and then i, I don't know when ken's supposed to fly into town and we're supposed to do this thing live um i got a service technician his name is jordan uh, 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 uh his name is jordan coming on and um and then I have, there's some, there's actually a, uh, oh, oh, okay. 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 I probably should have made this in the beginning. I probably should have said this in the beginning. Many of you have seen the, I don't going to make a separate post for this, but many of you have seen, there's a whole big scandal thing that happened on, was it the today show? Or maybe it was good. Good morning America. And it was the service technicians and they went out there and then the guy tried to tell her she had a micro leak in her coil and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Well, I have the, the old owner, the guy who created that company, who no longer owns it, okay? You guys know him. He also started CEO Warrior. His name is Mike Agugliaro. Agugliaro. Um, he is actually going to be on next week. It's going to be a fiery episode. He's on fire. He's He wants to talk about... It was Inside Edition. Thank you, Chris. Um, he's going to be on next week. It's going to be a pretty busy live stream, I think. And um, I'm excited about talking to him. So... Um, for all of you guys that are listening, check in. I think it's the 21st, but I have to check. But yeah, anyway, That's awesome. um, Gil, I love you, dude. Um, awesome. I'm going to end this right here, guys. I know you end You end with like you got the national anthem and Star Spangled I, Banner. and all I, I start I start with that. You okay. start, yeah. Maybe if you watched once in a while. Oh, well, we were friends. Dude, um, <laughs> I watched 100 episodes. I actually, just, I, I'd rather listen actually than watch. I find it amazing that people watch all of their podcasts today. It's, I was talking to Jennifer about this. I'm like, I cannot believe the amount of people that watch their podcasts. Like I, if I'm in the truck, I just want to listen to it. But apparently everybody's like, no, dude, give me the video. I want to see these guys move around and stay in the same spot for the next, you know, hour and a half. So. I have some, but the audio is what pays the bills. But anyway, I love you too, brother. I appreciate you. I love what you're doing. Uh, keep doing it, man. And you know, if I can help you in any way, 
I'm a fucking phone call away, my man. All right, man. Love you, dude. All right, but good night, guys. See you, everybody.